Hello, 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 everyone. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Uh, welcome back to another very exciting look at Trotec Ruby. Uh, my name is Don. I am still kicking around. <laughs> I've been here since the last live stream. They can't get rid of me. I'm too excited about Ruby, and I hope you guys all are too. We're so happy to have you joining us from all around the world. Please say hello in the chat. Let us know where you're watching from. Uh, uh, Grace watching from the A. Very happy to have you. Good morning all from Canada. Afternoon from the UK. Wow, so many people watching. That's really, really exciting. I hope you guys are excited to learn more about Ruby today. We have all of the experts with us. Uh, I'm going to get right into things, I think. I think we've only got an hour today, and we've got some really exciting stuff to show you. So I'm going to go around here and really quickly introduce uh, some familiar faces and also some new faces. Uh, let's start with Alex S. over on my this uh, camera left. <laughs> yep. How are you, Alex? Very well done. Thank you. Very good. Um, for anybody who's watching for the first time, do you want to tell us a little bit about uh, your position with Trotec or how you're related to, to Ruby? Yeah. Well, I'm with Crotec now since um, five years, um, and I'm responsible product manager for Ruby, um, for in general, the software products here at Crotec. Um, yeah, so I'm very excited to show you the latest updates. Um, we are going to launch soon in Ruby, and yeah, looking forward to your feedback again. Absolutely. Alex makes a very good point, too. Um, Definitely, uh, if you have any questions as we go along, as I said, I promised you guys the experts and I have I like to think I've delivered. Um, good morning from Bowman, Alabama. And Don, do you sleep? Only here in the office and only very briefly. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm too excited. Um, uh, but yes, definitely ask us questions just like our last stream. And if you didn't get a chance to, to catch our last stream about Ruby, uh, all of the VODs should be available on YouTube. Definitely check it out. It's worth a look. Uh, also joining us, same as from the last stream, is uh, Alex J. How are you, sir? Yeah, I'm good. Very well. Thank you very much. Here is Alexander Jauka from, from Austria at the office here, headquarters at Trotec. Um, I'm leading the, the product managers and the product marketers group, and I've been highly involved with this project for now, I think, almost 10 years, I would say, when this started back in the days when, when the initial idea came up. And I'm really excited here uh, to, to show more of Ruby to the world with my colleagues together and you, Tom. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I echo those sentiments 100%. Um, uh, our, our new face today, joining us uh, for the first time, at least uh, to my knowledge on a Ruby stream, is uh, Christoph. How are you, sir? Hello. Hi. Uh, I'm good. How are you? Very good. Uh, I'm doing my favorite thing. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Uh, I'm Christoph, and I'm a software development manager for Ruby team here in Poland. Very cool. Um, so I think we're going to uh, to kick things off right away. For those of you, again, who haven't seen it, definitely uh, check out your local Trotex YouTube channel to see our, our previous stream. Uh, but I think we're going to have uh, Alex Yocker perhaps give us a, a short sort of statement to kick things off. And I wanted to show you guys as we're doing that uh, just a short video about Ruby here as we're going. Uh, so Alex, go ahead and take it away, and I will start this video. Okay, thank you very much, Don. And also thank you to, to the colleagues at Trotec Laser Canada uh, for hosting the second global Ruby webinar, what we're doing right now. And I just want to talk briefly um, about where, uh, why Ruby is there. But before, I would like to let you know that we are really, really excited uh, at Trotec that now everything comes together and Ruby finally hits the road. Um, the responses are great, uh, outstanding. We're getting tons of feedbacks, uh, initial skepticism, to be honest. But now we already got uh, hundreds of Ruby fans running it uh, with their lasers. The people love the photo engravings, the import functions, the hot folders are very well perceived, common line cutting. And the people are also asking for the Ruby API uh, to fire their speedy from their uh, front end software. So within just a few weeks, we get so many insights and now we can improve and further develop. And that's exactly why we are doing this beta program to learn from you and to change the world of lasers with you together. So I would like to thank you in the name of Trotec for your contribution and to drive Ruby forward. So why is Ruby there? Um, as I said before, we started this initiative, the initial idea 
came up several years ago when we started to work on Job Control 10. And now we're taking this idea to the next step with Ruby. At the time, back in the days, we, we realized that the users, they expect more from their laser software. The, the way uh, from 10 years ago up until now, how the people work dramatically changed. Uh, lasering is not like a, a hobby in the garage. It's really a, a, in a manufacturing setup and the people making a good living with their lasers. So the needs also grew over the time. The people want to use multiple clients to access their laser. They, on the other hand side, they want to access many machines, several machines from one client. They want to use Macs, PCs, tablets, and notebooks. They want to have a single program to create, prepare, produce, and manage all laser jobs. And the laser should be integrated in an overall workflow as an intelligent component and exchanging data with like e-commerce systems or ERP system. And with Ruby, we would like to do all this. Ruby wants to connect lasers, laser users, be open to any customer workflow and provide a high degree of automation. With this, we want to make laser users work simpler, faster and more profitable for you. And we are convinced with Ruby, we're redefining the boundaries of laser software, what laser software can do. And we set new standards again here. So that's about it, my little Ruby pitch here. <laughs> and now let's have a close look, a sneak peek into release 1.1, which is due next week for download and release. So Alex, the stage is yours now. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. The pressure is on now. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, everybody, for your time for joining um, this session. Um, hopefully, many of you have already been at the previous session. Um, for those who have not been, I will just very quickly in the beginning um, give an idea of, of what is Ruby about, um, how it works, how the workflow looks like. Um, and then we are actually continuing and starting with, with all the new functionalities that, that are coming. And really, we hope we can actually create the same excitement on your side um, as we have it here. Um, because I think what we are going to show today is, is, is pretty awesome. And well, let's get started. Let's get started right away. So for the beginning, um, you see, I, op I already opened um, my Ruby account my Ruby page here in Google Chrome, um, have everything open in here. And as you know from, from the previous time, um, I can just directly drag and drop a PDF file into Ruby. And I will just click this one here on the desktop, drop it, and it's imported now to Ruby. And we can open it directly in here and basically do all the design and graphic modifications um, we would need um, to adjust for the laser operation. So we can do rotating, we can do scaling. Uh, we see the color palette in here, so we can assign objects to different layers to have them engraved and, or cut it differently. And we have really a variety of the first graphic editing functionalities in here as well um, that do not just enable us to modify existing designs, which are imported, but also um, create entirely new designs directly in Ruby in here. In this case, all looks good. So we'll just create the job out of it. And it's placed now on our virtual laser area on the on the laser bed. And we see already here the laser crosshead. So we see the, uh, where the laser is currently standing. We can just drag and drop our job here to the laser crosshair. What we can also do now here is we can just drag and drop the crosshair, put it at the end of the job. And as we see on the laser camera, the laser will just automatically move and I move it back now again. And see that it moves back. So we can really immediately, very quickly and easy see if the design will actually fit on the workpiece. So in this case, all looks good. I will just duplicate it with copy paste, make a second copy out of it. Check the material settings, all looks good. And push it directly to the laser. And I can just immediately hit the run button and the laser will start working. So 
So you see really, and I will stop the laser now. So you really see how super easy and fast it is to create the, to directly import a PDF file and just get started right away with Ruby. I will now, so this um, for the moment, really to give you an impression of, of what is Ruby about, um, I will now show you um, what is coming next with the next release. So what, what new features are coming. And um, for this, the first thing I would like to show you is um, the hot folder functionality, the import functions we are having in Ruby. Some of you might have seen this already. Um, so when you go to the Windows desktop application, to the Dray app, and right-click on it, you have the option Open Import Folder. And we can click at this and directly um, open the folder structure, um, the whole folder structure, uh, where the files automatically get imported to Ruby. So we can basically place jobs, uh, place files, um, the supported file types directly in those folders, and it will then automatically be imported to Ruby. And what is new about this now is on the one hand, we, as you can see, we're having folders for each individual user we have in the Ruby account. So the files will that get imported for those individual users, but much more, the big improvement on the whole folder we have made now is that the files will automatically get imported when a user is logged in. So you can basically put in files um, to the hot folder, even though you're not logged into Ruby. And as soon as you get logged in, it will automatically import to it. And for demonstration, I will show you this now. I'll just copy the directory to here. And I prepared a file here in call draw up front for you. Um, as you can see, outline with some uh, rounded, uh, in rounded, inbound, rounded, rounded corners, some text in there as well. And well, it's named here already. Um, big improvement we made as well. Um, as you know um, from the previous session, we have been able already to import PDF files with text and modify um, the text and directly in Ruby. So we've also made this improvement on the SVG files that we can create SVG files with text in it and import the text to Ruby. So we will still be able to modify the text and directly in Ruby. So I will save this file now, save as, just enter the file directory from the hot folder before. I will select my Ruby user here now, where I'm, where I'm currently logged in to the Ruby account and save it as an SVG file. We get the save dialog in here. Um, basically, all looks good. So we export the text really as a text, not as curves, and press OK. And it's saved to the directory. And in a second, you see, it's automatically imported to Ruby directly. We have the file now directly in here. And as you can see, we can click the text here and start modifying it. We can click this here, make it the capital T, and change it, and adjust it directly in Ruby. So we always can make these small adjustments just with the PDF files as well, now also with SVG files. We can create the job out of it. And another improvement um, we're going to see here now is I'm going to move the laser a bit now. Um, we introduced now also the markers we know already from job control. So when hitting F8 on the keyboard now, I will add a marker to the, to the working area here in Ruby. When I move the laser, we see the marker is here. I can add another one here. And I can use those markers now as snap points for my jobs. So I can snap them to here. Of course, I can also save them. And they are now saved, um, so the designs are saved with the markers in my job, and I can access them later on. And of course, oh, again, um, like we know it from job control, we can create our cheeks um, to precisely uh, position, position files um, really on the work pieces we have already prepared. We could also push this to the laser now, 
and also hit the run button again and start the laser. But for now, I will leave it like this. Another um, improvement or let's say additional um, add-on we, we included to Ruby is that we are now we have now integrated something like the knowledge base. Um, and the knowledge base, when we click it, we see uh, we get to the Ruby website where we are having the Ruby FAQs, which basically are the start of um, creating a Ruby knowledge base where we want to provide all sorts of information that help you in your daily base with Ruby. So on the one hand, for now, um, it's more built up like FAQs. So there are more there are on the one hand some general questions, um, some most some frequently asked questions, but of course there are also some technical tips and tricks um, that should help the that should help you in your daily work um, really to to improve your your efficiency and the workflow. So that's in the main menu now here available. And now we are coming to the really, really exciting part of, of our Ruby improvements. And for this, I'm going to the user management in here. And Chris, I will just delete your user now from here, remove it, and I will create a new one for you. The user is deleted now. And I will now create a new user for Chris. And we will show you in a second how Chris can now remotely access my Ruby account here in Austria. So just copy paste your email address from here Get to here. And Chris will now show us in a second um, that he now automatically got an email. Uh, re he received an email with his user credentials, with his username, with his password, and also the URL address, how he can now access um, the Ruby account here. And for this, I will now hand over to Chris. Yes, thank you, Alex. Uh, as, as you mentioned, I, I have now received an email from you and I have credentials to, to log into Ruby. So I received a temporary password that I can paste in here. I can also paste my email to not rewrite it. And through the network, I can access a Ruby that's installed on, on your computer. Uh, on the first login, I'm monitored to change the password. So I will change it. There's, there's a standard for, for, for password. And I'm in, and I can see everything that that you already added so i would like to show you some features some of them are already there for some time and some of them are new and to do that i start with importing the file the other way so other than using hot folder i can actually import it by drag and dropping and if i have a if i have an image uh, if i have a project like this I can see that it's not very well suited for the laser from from starters. Uh, so I would like to work a little bit on on this one. And you can see multiple colors here. And if I just uh, scroll down here, you can see that these are not recognized layers. So Ruby is showing that there's something wrong with this with this project. So I can I can fix it myself, and to do that I will filter off the red layer just to make it more clear for me, so that that frame doesn't come in my way, and I can select the whole cake, and to just make it good for engraving I will use our, one of our new functions, which is called grayscale vector, and if I do this, then immediately this cake is moved to the black layer with proper tones, with proper L factor, and it's ready for engraving. Also, I can move it to any other color, color layer so that it's, uh, so I can put a different effect on it on the laser. And this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move it to dark green layer. And as you can see, this, this project looks like this now. 
uh, I go back to my frame, so I'll bring it back. And also, as you can see, the margin is a little bit odd on this imported file, so I can quickly fix that with Ruby, just fit uh, the size to design. And when I'm happy with it, I can also change the name, save it, and here I go. My, my first design is ready. And for something else, I, I would like to show you the design that I will create from scratch. And I'll import another file, which is actually a photo. And, and here it comes. Uh, so this is now again in my Ruby. And let's say I want to make uh, something for, for Alex there in Austria. And I would like to, to add a text to my, uh, to my design. So I want to add a text. This is, this is very tiny for now, but I can make it bigger just so uh, maybe not that big. Uh, so uh, this is visible and let's probably just choose another font from any of the font that's installed on Alex computer. Let's, let's make it like this. Uh, but I actually want it engraved and I want it engraved on the same layer as the photo that I have. Uh, so I move it to black layer, but then as you can see, it's not, it's not very well visible. So if I want to make an adjustment to that, I can draw a rectangle behind it just to have this space covered and not included in the engraving process. I put it in the yellow layer and make it filled. And as you can see, these elements are shown in the order that I've added them. So for now, the rectangle is covering my text and I don't want that. So I will now switch the layers mode and I put the text on top. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, okay. I'm sorry, need to do that again. Something went wrong with my with my network. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, you sound good. Okay. Uh, so I'll do that again. Uh, and I put uh, I put the text back again. Okay. And again, choose the font. Yeah, so now the, the, the order is, is proper. Uh, okay, and let, let me adjust the track angle a little bit more. And of course, the snap, the slap lines, let me easily position this in the middle of, of my covering rectangle. I save my job. And the last thing, uh, sorry, my design, and the last thing that I want to add here is the frame. To, to cut out everything. I'm going to make it in red. So it's a default cutting layer. And I want it, of course, to, to cover, uh, to, to handle the whole image, to be around the whole image. So it's cut out nicely. So I put the dimensions here. I will unlock proportions and put it in the top left corner of the whole design. I look at it one more time. I'm happy with it. So I'm going to save it. And now I would like to show you that this distinction between designs and job that we make in Ruby. Uh, so this is my design and I want to put it on the laser. So I'm creating job out of it. And as you can see, it comes out huge. It's much bigger than my plate and I'm not very happy about it. But with Ruby, I can easily take this and make it much smaller so it fits on my laser plate nicely. And what's important here is that because we're getting rid of the printer driver, we have a full control on that image scaling and Ruby provides you with the pixel perfect image scaling. That means your engraving will 
probably will be in in the best possible quality uh, automatically so you don't need to worry about it you're flexible you're you're good to scale it just in the ruby and ruby will take care of it being in the highest possible quality and it's also easy to to copy this design so if i want to make some gifts for my other friends i can easily copy it and also it allows me to modify the the design in this in this context so i can go and for example i i would like to make one for don as well and update it and i can go in and do one for uh do one for stefan let's let's change this one for for aria okay i can make it bold and you know modify the size just to fit the rectangle and update and for uh, the last one if i decide that this one i want to fill with the pencil or whatever i can just delete the name so i can fill it up later and also i can now get back to my previous design which was the cake and i can easily put it on the on the plate and copy paste and and it's and it's here so this can all be done i'll switch material to something that i have prepared earlier and you can see that it updates with the selected material moving everything to the correct processes and showing me exactly how this would look on the laser so one last thing that i want to show you is that i can enable this function which is skip overlapping cut lines and in this way every over overlapping cut line like here like here this will only be cut once just to not burn your material just to save your time uh, this function will cover it for you ruby will cover it for you uh, so i can take a one last look if i like it i save it and i queue it and one other thing that we want to mention is that uh, right now I'm using Ruby remotely. I'm using it connected to uh, Ruby hosted on Alex PC. And if I just let, let's remove this one, you can see that there's a laser crosser here. If I just move it around, I can see the message that this is this action is blocked because it requires direct connection to the laser device for security reasons. And uh, let's save it. Yeah. And for for the same reasons, I'm not allowed to to start the job. So Alex, I will ask you to uh, to start my job. And thank you. Oh, I think you're muted, Alex. Thanks, <laughs> Tom. <laughs> Absolutely. So now I'm back to the show. Um, well, as you can see um, here in my design list, um, I am having all the different designs Christoph just created um, in my Ruby account. So I'm having everything available here, he just did. And when going to the queue, I also have this job that has been pushed to the queue. And I can just directly start lasering now here and start the laser from my PC. And we see on the laser camera, the laser is working. So of course, for security reasons, um, Christoph is not allowed to remotely start my laser or to do any um, movement of the laser head. So this needs to be done locally at the laser directly. But you can just directly really prepare everything remotely and then just start it at your laser machine. And well, another thing I would like to mention on especially on the on the images, on the photos um, Christoph has shown, 
because of how Ruby is handling images, how Ruby is handling photos, and that we are actually storing the really the image in in our Ruby account. Um, this gives us also the possibility to really size and resize scale and decrease the images directly in Ruby. And just when we send it to the laser, it's really then converted and transferred into the perfect resolution for the laser machine. So this really gives us the best the possibility and the chance to get the best possible photo engraving results as well. Well, and we have seen now how Christoph remotely prepared everything on his Windows PC. And now I would like to show you some very exciting stuff as well. We have seen this partly already in some of the promotional videos. And in the meantime, I created also an account for Alex Jauker. And Alex, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. So I would like to hand over to you now, Alex. You mm -hmm. are also remotely connected to my Ruby account. And we will see now how you will do all the things Christoph just did from your Mac PC. OK. So here I'm sitting uh, in my office in Austria uh, in front of my lovely MacBook Pro. And I have Illustrator here open, Creative Suite 2020. Unfortunately, I did not manage to change the language from German to, to English. I managed to change the language in Ruby, but not in, in, uh, in the Adobe Suite. So sorry for that. So, but you can imagine what I'm going to do. So here I have my design in Illustrator and I just save it uh, here as a PDF. You can see it here in the background on the desktop and I'm going to switch to Ruby right now. And I just drag and drop here uh, the design and it's imported here. And as said before, uh, I just, uh, for example, change here the, the text in here. And create the job and it's here on my working area and I just select it, copy and paste and so on. And I put it to the laser queue here. Just switch to the production screen, to the produce screen and you can see here my uh, job. I bring it the sheet to the front and now Alex can run it on the laser and I did prepare everything up until the play button uh, directly on the Mac. Oh, I think you might be muted again, Alex. I'm sorry. Sorry. Not at all. We have to let people know that this is live for real because that makes it yeah. that much more exciting. <laughs> Sorry. So as you could see, I just did not press any button in Ruby. I just hit the run button directly on the razor and well, could just directly start um, what, what, what Alex prepared before. So basically, this means um, you would not need any interaction with the Windows PC. You could just directly prepare everything from your Mac and just hit the run button then on, on your laser machine. And well, just to just to give you a bit more um, overview of what we have just seen here, I also prepared um, a short um, overview, a short sketch um, to explain this a bit in more detail. Let me just put that in full screen. Um, so what we just have seen is that basically um, we're having more or less kind of local Ruby server that is connected via USB to our speedy. And this local Ruby server basically can be installed and hosted on any Windows 10 PC. So just having a Windows 10 PC connected via USB to the speedy. And first of all, me from the lab, Alex here, I was just connected via LAN to it. 
and could do everything and could start directly here um, on the Speedy. Then we have seen Alex J um, from the office upstairs here in Austria, connected via Wi-Fi with his Mac to the Ruby server. It did all the preparation and that just started the laser directly on the machine. And then last but not least, we had Christoph sitting in the office in Poland. He is connected via VPN to our network here. So everyone connect or everyone basically in our network, um, in our local network here at Rotec can access this local Ruby server and can do any kind of job preparation, design editing, job placing on the laser bed and even push everything to the queue and prepare everything and just hit the run button on the laser then. Well, and um, I hopefully, I hopefully um, believe um, that you think that this is so exciting as we see it here. And I'm actually looking forward to see what questions came up now during the demonstration. 100%. I'm, uh, there was a point there in the middle of that where I think I stopped watching as like a Trotec staff member and just started watching as a fan of Ruby. I think I sort of, <laughs> I sort of just got lost in the like, oh, wow, that's cool. <laughs> um, we actually have some great questions that came in uh, through the chat. And thank you again all so much for watching. Uh, if you came in partway through the, uh, the webinar, not to worry, this will be uploaded to our YouTube channels, uh, hopefully later on today or over the weekend at some point. So you'll always be able to go back and, and rewatch and see all the little details. Um, but with no further ado, let me jump right into these questions. Uh, first and foremost, we have a question about if Ruby will work wirelessly and maybe uh, Alex, I'll, I'll ask that of you directly, Alex S. Mm -hmm. Well, um, just as I said, um, Basically, you just have to be in your local network to connect to the Ruby server. So it doesn't matter via LAN or just Wi-Fi. Um, so also, yes, wireless, you can just directly connect to it um, and then do all the preparation. Makes sense. I have to say that, I'm sorry, I'm still trying to get over. We had a, a note in the chat as well that said, uh, this is better than when Steve Jobs revealed the iPhone for the first time when it came up on the Mac. So <laughs> I'm still getting over. That was very funny. Um, another quick uh, question, sort of on a similar note. Um, we had a question from a teacher who said that they're an educator, curious if they could install this on their entire classroom set of laptops in the makerspace. So you were sort of showing some of the way that uh, accounts are set up. Would, is there a, a maximum number of accounts that a user can have, or can we have a separate account for each student, perhaps, that would want to use it? Forgive me, I, anyone jump in. I, yeah. okay, let, 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 I'm let too blind. I'm Canadian. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now let, let me um, answer this one. Well, basically, you can, can set up uh, tens and dozens of, of uh, accounts uh, on your Ruby server. And then every student can connect to the to the Ruby server, and there's not really a need to install something on on the client. And up until the the play button, you can prepare and do anything in Ruby uh, from from any client without any installation. Just the certificate, the security certificate needs to be installed uh, or accepted, um, and that's about it. Don, now you're muted. Now you're muted. I just want to be one of the cool kids, I'm afraid. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, maybe this will be a great question I'd like to ask uh, Christoph. You were showing off some of the, 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 the hot folder where you can do drops of PDFs or SVG files. Um, we had a question. Oh, pardon me. That's a one for the future. Um, if that will allow you to do sort of mass imports. So if you're able to drop more than one file into the folder at once or if it's sort of one at a time, um, you know, yeah, absolutely. You can do multiple files at once. It it works nicely. It works very really quick, and it also comes in packages. So you won't, you know, break your pipeline. It will be handled for you. Very cool. That was one thing I definitely saw a lot of in the chat too. People marveling at how quickly it happened, even across, like you say, from Poland to Austria, or you know, the the it appeared in Ruby almost instantaneously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me see here. So uh, really quickly, I'd like to swing back to Alex S. Uh, I have a question for you about, uh, I believe we might have touched on this in the first video. Uh, we had a customer wondering if serialization will be possible with Ruby in the future, sort of in the pipeline. Yeah, uh, well, definitely. 
So, so this is definitely on the roadmap and one of the things coming next. Um, we see that the serialization and, and in general handling of variable data is, is, is a huge thing. And this is definitely something we want to provide to our users as well, to the laser, to the laser community, to the laser world. Well, and, and the thing is, you know, just, just as we have seen today, um, for us, it's all about to, to create this, this seamless, smooth experience. And we want to have this with the variable data as well to just make it as easy as possible and, and just run it as smooth as possible. Absolutely. I think, yeah, I think we've definitely seen that today, no question. Um, so I have a question here. I'm not sure if I have it in a little convenient banner, but I will ask uh, Alex J. Okay. Um, so is it possible that uh, we'll be able to control more lasers with, with one copy of Ruby in the future, or is it just sort of, you know, one copy of Ruby per laser? Mm -hmm. Well, um, that's also one, one of uh, our uh, roadmap features here. As we had the question on the rotary, when uh, will the rotary be available? Uh, when do we get serialization? Also multiple uh, machines to control from one PC. Um, someone asked the question. Uh, we saw a touch screen uh, in the laser in the in the uh, vision video, the the um, vision of Ruby, and we have a full pipeline um, of uh, definitely and well requested uh, uh, features here on our roadmap. And the next year is going to be uh, definitely very very exciting for all of us and for the laser world, and all of them are on the roadmap. Um, we are now looking for feedback. Um, so if you're missing a feature, if you think, hey, that's that's what we need to, to have in the software, please send us, send us an email or directly when you're a Ruby user uh, through the, the feedback form, we're getting tons of feedback, but but please let us know that's exactly what we're doing. We try to learn from you. We're reaching out to you. Uh, and please give us feedback what you would like to see uh, in Ruby next. So the, the order is important. So the more people uh, vote or demand uh, certain features, the faster they will get. And, you know, ergo, I'm, I'm certainly not, you know, naming any one feature out, but you know, it's our very first uh, video about an update to Ruby and we did see Ruby running on Mac. So we've, we've heard you absolutely. And that is very, very true. If you see something coming up in the roadmap uh, that you're particularly interested in, please, you know, send us your feedback uh, across the board. We would love to hear it and it helps us know, you know, what we should prioritize. Um, so on a similar sort of note, uh, if someone were looking to find the, the roadmap, Alex, would they find it on our, is it on our homepage, if I'm not mistaken, the trotechlaser.com? Yes, it's there. The, the roadmap is there on ruby.trotechlaser.com. Uh, there's the public roadmap. We are continuously updating it. So next week there will be the update uh, of the roadmap. Uh, and according to that, we're, we're adjusting and pivoting um, and and doing the best for for our laser users here. Perfect. Um, so you sort of touched on it really briefly, but I have to ask it officially because again, I have the the, the vision video pulled up here, and I'll show it perhaps if I can uh, really fast. I think this is something that um, we've been getting questions about one hundred percent. Is this beautiful feature that you see here? Just very very quickly. <laughs> um, so is this something, um, here's the actual question. I saw the video, uh, there's a touch screen on the laser machine. Uh, Alex asked, would you be able to tell us, is this something that's coming in the future? Is this something, you know, is this just a prototype? You know, is this something that uh, Trota customers should look forward to? <laughs> well, um, I, won't, I, don't, I don't want to tell too much and too many details about this yet, um, but this is definitely coming. Um, it, this is what we see here is actually, um, we call it Ruby Insight. So just as a, as a sneak teaser, as a sneak preview. Um, so, well, yeah, there's definitely more to come and, and we, are, we are heavily working on this as well. Yeah. That's awesome. That's so, all we need yeah, to know. <laughs> Alex is not allowed to talk about it. We know the date, but he's not allowed to talk about it. 
<laughs> no, that makes perfect sense. I mean, look, it, it works as a, a very good uh, teaser. And again, if you guys haven't seen, I mean, if anyone hasn't seen the vision video uh, for Ruby, it's on our YouTube channel. It's on YouTube channels uh, at the Trotech local to you uh, around the world. Definitely check it out. It's got some really, really great info in there to sort of uh, double down on everything you've seen today. Um, let me see if I have any other questions here that I can ask. Um, perhaps just really quickly, um, I have a question on, uh, I'll ask Christoph if these features will be available for all the speedy models. So perhaps just which uh, machines should customers uh, expect that Ruby will first be available for? We're supporting all existing speedy models, both new and all other wow. products. Awesome. Uh, do we have any plans for it to um, to come to other machines perhaps in the future? Or for the moment, uh, do we know if it's just going to be relegated to the, the speedy machines? All, all the machines are on our roadmap, but we just can't tell when. But definitely we want to cover all Trotec machines in the future. Excellent. We've got to leave some some breadcrumbs and some teasers to keep you guys coming back for these videos, you know, month after month. We want to have you, as I say, definitely interact with the roadmap and definitely send us uh, your feedback. Um, so I have a, another question here that I'll throw to Alex J, if you don't mind. Um, it's a question about, uh, and I think, again, we touched on this in the first video, but it's an important point. Uh, you know, will Ruby replace job control? Should users start working with Ruby principally, or will we still see development on job control sort of going forward for the next few years? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, definitely the, the, the future, um, the technological future will be Ruby. So the main efforts of our developments will go into to Ruby. Uh, and the the progression and uh, the migration from from job control um, uh, to Ruby um, will will be a matter of of um, one one and a half years. So we don't want to force someone to switch to Ruby because the the people need to see the benefit, and we are convinced that the benefit and the value to switch to Ruby is absolutely there. But no one is is forced to do it. So you can keep your job control set up and we will also support it and keep it up and running for the next years, definitely. But technology wise, we are putting everything in full speed behind Ruby. Fantastic. Um, so really quickly, um, let's see. Perhaps, uh, I think I've got another great question here from the chat. I want to see if I could find it. Uh, Kenneth also mentions, and we had a few people in the chat mention this uh, iPad. Um, a really quick question for you, Alex S. Uh, so you mentioned about if, if a computer is within the local network, does that mean also that you could access it wirelessly? So from your, your smart device, your iPad, anything that's sort of connected to the network, as long as it's got the, the network connection, and the internet connection? Mm. Well, definitely. So this will be the future. Basically, any device that's able to to handle and use a web browser, basically will be able to 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 access Ruby. Very cool. Already now, it's not yet optimized for touchscreen operation. Uh, to be honest, the, the the focus at the moment are laptops, notebooks, and desktop PCs. But uh, technology-wise, you can do it already, uh, but not yet optimized for touchscreen. Gotcha. Um, so uh, then another quick question for Alex S as well, uh, just about whether job control and Ruby, can they run on the same computer for now? Um, can you do both of them sort of simultaneously or, or at least on the same computer? Yeah, well, definitely yes, because for the moment um, during the Ruby installation, we still require job control to be on the PC as well as we are you know, grabbing kind of all the, the, the machine files, the any the, the ini files, configuration files to set up the Ruby account as well. Um, so definitely, yes, you can use both simultaneously. Um, and just in the tray app where I did also open the hot folder directory, you can just switch um, the laser mode to Ruby or job control and decide which program you want to use for the moment. Very cool. And we're asking, um... So if, if someone would like to download Ruby, uh, and again, you can always visit uh, trotechlaser.ruby.com, I believe it is. Um, I will double check for you and just get the, the exact link. Certainly it'll be in the description of the video. Um, but 
um, if somebody would like to download it, there is you have to have Job Control 11.4 installed, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, right? It's the newest version of Job Control in order to install the, the Ruby beta. Um, perhaps Alex could uh, tell me, Alex J. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Ruby.protoglazer.com, you, you can register there, download it, you get an email with the credentials, and then you're uh, set to go. Together with Job Control, you download it and install Job Control and then you're up and running. Excellent. I mean, that's been my experience too. Um, we have a lot of wonderful comments and I, and I have to say again, just once more, thank you all so much for watching today. Uh, we're going to continue to do these videos for you. Uh, I believe this will very likely be our last Ruby video for 2020, uh, <laughs> heading into 2021. I think there'll be some more coming as we continue down the roadmap with our new features and all the new stuff that's gonna be coming. Uh, just once again, to echo everything that my colleagues have said today, I mean, absolutely, please, if you haven't yet, uh, you know, I think today will almost definitely have convinced you to download the Ruby beta, try it out for yourself with your speedy. Uh, it has some amazing features that I think you're really going to like. Uh, at the same time, too, we really need your feedback, uh, particularly now. If there's a feature you would like to see uh, on the roadmap, if there's just something you've always wished that we could implement into our software, please let us know. We are absolutely really excited to hear from you uh, above all. Um, if you ever need uh, any assistance also on registering, uh, certainly there is a web form that you can visit. And again, we'll have all of this linked through the YouTube video. Um, but if you ever need any assistance, uh, definitely get a hold of your local Trotech. Uh, you can visit trotechlaser.com and that will direct you to you know, a contact page for wherever your, your local Trotech is. And we'd be very happy to help you get set up. Uh, again, you know, getting that feedback is our number one priority right now. So that's you know a huge, huge thing for us. Um, I have a, a question here that's come in. Um, I have a customer asking, so uh, can we say, gentlemen, I'm not sure, is the full version free or subscription-based? Do Is it a, a one-time fee? Is this something that we can discuss right now? Perhaps, uh, Alex J, I'll, I'll turn to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, beta is, is for free. And also when you purchase a, a laser machine, uh, Ruby is included. Uh, with the machine, of course. So everything you know today, uh, you, you, when you buy a laser machine and you get chop control, chop control is also included. And uh, a similar feature set will also be included in the future when you purchase a Chotec laser machine. What we already have today uh, with chop control are modules like chop control vision, chop control cut, for example. Mm -hmm. and these are payable options. Um, and similar feature sets like job control cut or job control vision um, might also be payable options uh, in the future. Uh, that's that's not yet decided what kind of feature set, but when there is really a benefit and it's an upgrade and payable option uh, uh, like we have today uh, will be there in the future too. But the base version uh, will always be for free and included when you purchase a laser machine. Perfect. I think that's a great note perhaps to finish on. We're just uh, about to hit the hour and uh, like 2020, I think uh, this, uh, you know, the sooner this ends, uh, the more we're all excited for 2021. <laughs> um, <laughs> I will say again, you know, thank you to everyone so, so much for watching. Um, you know, you will see this video on our YouTube channels, you know, as soon as possible, please review it, send us any questions, leave us comments on the YouTube channel. We will do our best to get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, as I said, and I can't say it enough, please download the Ruby beta, send us your feedback. We're really excited to hear from you and uh, definitely keep watching your emails for uh, announcements of further videos uh, to come down the line. Uh, Alex, Christoph, Alex, I'd like to say thank you so much for the three of you for joining us today. Uh, again, if uh, if there's anything, you know, any final thoughts, any final words we'd like to throw in there at the end, Alex or, or Christoph, anything, you know, we'd like to say? Uh, thanks for being with us and thanks for watching. And I'm pretty excited to let it all out now. <laughs> I think that goes for, for all of us, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, everybody. Download Ruby. Try it out. Give us your feedback. Absolutely. Yes. And we, we, really, we really appreciate your feedback, and we already used a lot of your suggestions. Yes. So if you want to help with it, your feedback is really of great value to us. We try to answer as much as possible, and we try to include your feedback in the development process as much as possible. 100%. I couldn't well, have said it's it. Actually, it's actually changed now. Um, 
to really make Ruby your software, your laser software actually and be part of the development and be become a part of Ruby. A hundred percent. Cool. We had a we had a stream the other day where we were saying Ruby users could be called Trotech Rudy. So this is your opportunity to <laughs> <laughs> to join the team. <laughs> Trotech Rudy. Um, on that very silly note, uh, I will say thank you all again so much for joining us. Uh, we will see you again very very soon. Uh, you know, a thank you from us, thank you from Austria, thank you from Poland, and we will uh, talk with you very shortly. Take care, everyone. Bye bye. Take care.